Welcome everyone. I will call the September 26th meeting of the Planning Commission to order. This is an extra meeting. We agreed to meet an additional time during the month so that we are we can continue to barrel toward our deadline that we have a milestone next week to complete our work on a draft of the town plan and forward it as a recommended draft to the select board. Uh, so tonight, that's the majority of our meeting. We'll have some time for public comment. We will work on the town plan. We're going to break it up into two parts, volume one, which is the higher level, more summary information, and then volume two, which is most of the data that backs volume one up. Uh, we'll have time for public comment, and then we'll wrap up and plan for the third. Does anyone have any changes for the agenda? Okay. Um, so the next item, so we're not reviewing minutes. We'll do that at our next meeting. Correct. Um, so the next item is opening public comment. So does anyone have anything to share with the planning commission this evening? If you wouldn't mind coming to the microphone. I've mentioned this multiple times. I find this document to be very difficult to work with. This is a legal document. This isn't a catalog. This isn't a sales uh, thing. The court, when they go to check, in a challenge to either issuance of a permit or denial of a permit looks to the town plan for guidance. And I think that we should have, and at this working level, we should have text, no pictures, text, so that it can be easily edited, easily read, highlighted, and people can comprehend it. It gets very confusing as you go through this. It's an excellent document for presentation, or sales of why people want to move to Jericho, but it doesn't do the job of a planning document that's necessary in a legal process. And just look at the volume of it. It's, and, and as uh, David had said, some of the essential pieces, for example, that in order to build a second home on your property that's not an ADU, you have to subdivide or go to a PDU, which is both expensive and problematic. It also brings a whole host of things with it. So it's like this intention of this document is to perpetuate the last 20 years, which is to impair and impede the development of additional housing in the town of Jericho. And I suggest that this could end up just like the zoning changes to the commercial district with a full-blown vote of the town because if people can't understand it and they can't see the consequences of it, this could be a very successful document. And I think there's many simple ways to make it a lot e easier, but it's not moving as you'd encourage people to do. It's not moving the needle forward. It's more of the same, very nice, very pretty and, and great to look at, but it's not a good document for getting things done and I've been in business for almost 60 years, and this would not pass muster in any business that I've been in as a planning document. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else uh, wish to offer a comment? If you're on the Zoom, if you wouldn't mind using the raise hand feature, which is in the reactions, Ray. Okay, so we'll move on then to discuss well, the- One unmuted himself, maybe he's trying to talk, I don't know. Or maybe he's never muted himself. Okay, Glenn, are you hoping to say something because we noticed that you're not muted? <laughs> okay. Yes, now we know. Okay. Um, so now we're gonna move on to number four and discuss the town plan. Uh volume one. I believe the plan was for David to facilitate our discussion on volume one, which is gonna focus primarily on the getting it done. Correct. Correct. Um, Lynn, I don't know if you have the document that you can put up on the screen. I don't seem to have access to the internet for some reason here. So, um, or I don't know if I have it on the thumb drive. Hang on a sec. 
And David, would you mind coming to sure. the microphone? Thank but, you. But I think I have to share because otherwise it's not people on Zoom can't see it very well. I think my friend that. Uh, I didn't put it on my thumb drive. Um, so let me think about how to get it to Sabina. Oh, I, um, I did, is it something that I don't have? Is it, I, was it in the packet? It was in the email that I sent yesterday. Okay, we're just working on trying to display the document so that people on Zoom can see it. And so for the for the rest of you, um, you received uh, probably a PDF of just what are the action items that are in the, the final chapter, uh, short term, medium term, long term. Um, my purpose here is to spend whatever time you need to, to talk those through. Do those accurately reflect uh, the actions that are prioritized throughout the plan? Um, and do they accurate, accurately reflect what you see as being the priorities um, in terms of the time frame. So those time frames are short term within one year, medium term within three years, longer term within five years. And to clarify, because we had talked about whether or not volume two has its own set of action items, and this is volume one. And your recommendation is that there is no real significant overlap between volume one and volume two. Right. And that everything that's super important has, as you described it, the greatest impact that affects multiple goals or that from our discussions for the last 18 months, we know are the highest priority items are the items that are on this list in volume one. The rest of the items are in volume two. They are, and they and they tend to offer, the, those items that you see listed at the end of each chapter in volume two are a little more granular. Um, they're things that um, are in the current town plan that we didn't want to lose, but uh, as an example, the, the second short-term uh, action item has to do with, you know, undertaking revision of the character-based zoning standards for Riverside. There may be items within volume two that you would want to consider as part of that process, but they fall within the umbrella of those kind of zoning changes or the development of uh, new town road standards or the development of an official map those kind of bigger topic priorities uh, are found in volume one, and then you'll find more detailed uh, things to consider when you are doing that kind of work in volume two. Right, okay. So I was confused about that for a long time. And so that's, that was the upshot of how it was resolved. Correct. So on the screen here then is is the the document that was emailed and as I said this is just pulled out of uh, the current draft. Um, uh, there are three tables, one for each time period, uh, an action. Who are the primary um, entities responsible for leading that action and and accomplishing it, and then uh, the last column. Uh, is a reference to what sections of the plan, uh, volume one part of the plan, does that um, most pertain to? So we had a discussion about this list at a previous meeting about having the responsible party, even though there are there is much collaboration that's required, actually sort of arm wrestling and having only one party listed mm -hmm. the, because the primary means the primary. Um, so what, what do you think about that? Um, I think it's, I think that's fine. Who's going to kind of pick this one up off the table and run with it? Yes, there are many people that need to be collaborated with uh, to get that done. And the ultimate decision, it may not be the ultimate decision maker, which in many cases is often the select board uh, to, to approve something, but they 
you know, for, for a variety of different reasons, they may not be the ones who are actively working on something. So. Right. So sort of the entity that should spearhead. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so maybe, are you thinking we're going to go through each of these items? There's about just to make sure we're copacetic with them, or do you want to handle it by exception? Like if people have questions or people have comments. Um, I'm happy to do it by exception if if you're comfortable with the order that they're in or or what they are. Um, we can certainly leave it at that and just focus on are there particular changes that individuals want to incorporate. Is there is there reasoning behind the order? Like did you did you ish? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's certainly the short, medium, and long, but. Um, within, yeah, but yeah, within a year, within the time frame. But but not necessarily, and and I I purposefully didn't within that time frame then number them. Right, which, I was asking him to number them, and he said that it implies a priority, which you may want to have. But I often find, you know, the if these are your prior priorities within the first year, you know, it's going to be. If you if you focus on one of them and then all of a sudden one of the other ones, as I like to think of it, becomes ripe for action, where you know the, the stars align that this is a real unique opportunity to take that one on. You don't want to have to have the conversation about, well, why are you working on number five when you haven't done one through four yet? Well, because the reality of the way things get done is that you undertake these initiatives when you have the time and the resources and, and the the collective will in order to make those things happen. Or and a grant. Right. And you know, so those things can vary. So I would be less concerned about the priority within the short term. I, it's a lot of things to do within the first year. And maybe maybe that's too many. I I, I think it's really important that there's one lead entity mm -hmm. for these because otherwise I think it's they're much more likely to slip through the cracks. Yeah. So um, I, I think that's really important. Um, I guess uh, I don't know if we should go through this individually or not, but um, I'm just looking at the first one. Uh, well, maybe for the purposes of identifying who do you think ought to be the lead right. for each one of them. Right. So I guess. Um, the first one, undertake the next steps regarding creating municipal wastewater infrastructure. Uh, that's, um, that seems, it's incredibly important, which is, is what we've all come to the conclusion of. As, a, as an action, I don't know what it means, I guess. Well, by and large, it's going to depend on what the what the result of the final feasibility study says. So we we don't have that study yet. It won't be done until maybe even the spring to understand what are those next steps. But this is recognizing that when that comes out, that's so. Is that study being given to the select board first or the planning office first? Who gets it first? It would go to the select board first. They're, they're the ones that will need to make a decision about, based on what the recommendation is, if they want to advance that option to go further into engineering. Like, I don't have the authority to make a decision like that. And I think they've been leading that effort. You know, you, no. you and John have been working on it, but. We've been updating them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Is there a role for the PC in that to sort of receive it earlier and then put our imprimatur of we agree this is something that should be done, and here's the rationale for why you select board should take the next step, mm -hmm. rather than asking them to do that analysis, which they may not have time to do. Mm -hmm. Well, right. I guess that's part of my question: is does the select board have the knowledge base and the expertise to to understand what the next step the most appropriate next step would be. Right. 
So and, and the capacity. Is and, and the capacity, sure. So not to make this chart more complicated, but is anybody familiar with just a basic Gracie chart? Responsible, accountable, consultative, informed. So you can have as many people as you want, and they all have different roles. The responsible party is the one responsible for making sure it happens at the end of the day. And then you have consulted parties and accountable parties and informed parties, right? And so not everyone in the entire town would be on there, but the planning commission might be consulted, but the select board is responsible, but the planning office is accountable, meaning no decision can be made without the accountable party doing their job. But at the end of the day, everyone understands that the accountable party is not the decision maker. The responsible party is the decision maker. Right. So how do you want to... That, that's why I, I didn't make this a laundry right. list of right. who's who's responsible right. for roles, this. But, but know, roles are important is what we're... But there's at least, saying. in any of these, there's at least one or two entities that you know, figure pretty prominently. And as I said, ultimately, the select board is going to be responsible for, for taking that action, adopting yeah. zoning changes, adopting an official map. You know, they, they're listed in everyone, but they're not the ones who are going to prioritize. Maybe we happen. do a simple take on what Sarah was just saying and just put like an asterisk next to the number one, you know, responsible party, because... At least this list is smaller than the current town plan. The current yeah. town plan has like everybody and this yeah. brother listed. But so for like the wastewater one, it also seems to me that if we, if this action item references the village wastewater study, that that would make it clear that there, because like in our, I think it was the ARPA recommendation, we actually have text mm -hmm. that says have a public process to review the results of the wastewater study and determine what the next steps are going to be. This is broader, this is better, but maybe by, because you just had to explain, okay, it's mm -hmm. really the wastewater study. So that means that would help clarify this action item if it referred to the study. Mm -hmm you know, based on the study, because the study is going to say X from an engineering point of view, but then the planning commission, I agree, is going to want to weigh in and say, well, based on planning and based on zoning and based on these locations or other plans that we have, we can help put those engineering recommendations in context. It, right. I, I feel the same way. It doesn't make sense to me that the select board would be the one to make the initial suggestion for the priority of what to do with that report. It, it's not their expertise. Right. It's our expertise or Linda's expertise. And so I feel like the select board, we all know the select board gets final say on everything that happens. Right. But I don't think they're, they should be the lead on that. So well, at your... the same time, I think they should be held accountable for not taking action. Whether they oh, say or so so what you know, gonna... the engineering, let's just say the engineering study could come back and say, forget it. There's nothing feasible. It's or it's going to cost, you know, a hundred million dollars. No, no. Whatever the facts are. And so they can't be accountable until there are favorable facts. No, they can be accountable even if they're not favorable accounts. They can be accountable for saying, we looked at it, we've assessed, we've assessed it, we've heard from the planning commission, we are not going to move forward with this because of those recommendations. It's still their decision that they have to make whether we move forward or not. And they are the ultimate accountable authority for that. But that doesn't mean we can't be saying, here's what we think should happen. You know, also, right, their decision. I think it's saying, like, who's carrying the ball next? Right. Not who's ultimately going to decide. Right. It's like right. whose court, who's yeah. who's got the ball. Right. And I think what you're saying is on this project, right now the engineers have the ball, and they will pass the ball back to the town. And you're suggesting that that ball get passed back to basically us, so that we yes. can yes. help and advise. Yes. 
the select board to put it into a greater context. Right, as we deliver to the select board, our recommendation is what to do. Particularly since we've acknowledged that the select board is stretched thin right. in their current configuration, right? So if we want to make sure this moves forward, right. we could be the responsible party to lead it and move it forward. So is it the planning commission? I think the planning commission gets the asterisks and is listed first. And maybe there's maybe there's a little a, a little bit of text that clarifies how this chart is that what the asterisk means is the party that's got the ball next. Why can't we just have one thing, one person? Uh, in in that would, I don't object to that in this particular case. I don't know that that's going to be so easy in all the other cases, but but there's always going to be somebody who says this is next. Right, you're doing this. Right, right. If, if there's not, I'm going to allow. I mean, we're going to do public comment after we have this discussion. I I would just like to say. This is a very specific thing that goes to both a specific thing, but also the structure and how you actually get something done. And I think the public should have the opportunity to comment with respect to Chris's problem. Absolutely. After we get through a little bit more. Thank you. I mean, to, to the ultimate responsibility. I think we, we can all agree that that ultimately fall off the select board yeah. for all of this. So maybe there's a paragraph or an asterisk that says ultimate responsibility is the select board. These other anointed individuals or appointed groups have a responsibility to inform the select board of options and next action section. But to play devil's advocate for a second, it's not really like a decision making matrix. Ultimately the select board decides everything. It's an it's an yeah. action list. And so if it's all about action and who's going to get stuff done and we've all been citing that as the most important thing is to move the ball forward, then why do we need to describe who ultimately deciding the select board ultimately deciding right. everything? Like the fourth item on this list is prepare a draft of proposed zoning changes. That's us. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's yeah, not the select board. We and can't it's, make them approve right. it. And, and it's not the affordable housing committee. Of course they're gonna help us. Right. Right. It's but just us. It's just us. Right. Here at the end. Okay, and so Linda, we'll get dragged through. Right. All right. So, the first, <laughs> so the first one, you'll reference the study, the text can yeah. reference the study. And implement the recommendations decision. of the wastewater feasibility study. Yeah. Okay. And it's the planning commission who's. Or the planning office, either one. I mean, I, I don't. Right. Well, the planning commission is, is appointed to advise the select board um, planning office, correct me if I'm wrong, is Linda, is commission is. Um, tasked with informing and providing insight for the planning commission to make plans. Is that correct? I'm appointed by the select board to support the planning commission's work. Yeah. So you're saying as well as the select board though, that you know mm -hmm. that there's a there's a project management role. So I think it's it's fair in a, in a lot of these situations that <laughs> a lot of these things fall on Linda's desk in one form or another. Right. And, okay. and if part of their staff review is like, oh my God, look at all the stuff the planning office has to do, that will help them okay. determine their staff. <laughs> More money. But what you're saying, Eric, is that it should be us listed, the planning commission. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I have the chain of command correct, that Linda, you are responsive to the select board. But are you more responsive to the planning commission than to the, the select board? She's in the room with us. <laughs> I, know she is, yeah. I don't know that I can answer that question. Um, John is on the con. <laughs> anyway, John could help I us. Say though, I think in that this out. particular case, since we're, we're, we don't want to be theoretical, right? We're talking about this wastewater thing. Mm -hmm. Linda knows a heck of a lot more about it than any of us. She's yeah. the liaison to John. John's the liaison. She's the liaison to the engineer. She's going to tell me when it's time to be on the agenda. 
she's going to tell me when the report is done. So I think planning office in this case is correct. If you're being really rigorous of who has the ball, we need like a ball. Yeah, yeah that feels right. accurate. And then I think it's correct. Correct. Yes. That's the, right. the, the, the con con magical talking yes, stick. Yes, I think the, talking yeah. stick. Yeah. I think the stick. sticking point for me was the phrase undertake the next steps because as the planning person, I can't undertake the next steps, which are going to be active decision-making about investing money. Well, so I think we want something like evaluating, yeah, evaluating the wastewater study or- Yes, you know, I think that would be more appropriate. Not that we're trying to like kick the can down the road and not you know be accountable to get something done, but that really is the literal next step. Well, I would see the study and, and ultimately recommend action based upon that. Right. So to me, it's about the action. You know, yeah. saying you can evaluate those. What are we evaluating for? To recommend acceptance, changes, modifications, or whatever mm -hmm. to that plan mm -hmm. My my suggestion would be we you know, recommend specific next steps towards creating these sites based upon the study that comes through. Yeah. Okay. And that way we are now tasked with right. We better come up with some recommendations right. on this. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Undertake a revision. Can we just say revise? We already know we have to do it. We already have a list. We've already hired a consultant to help us. Wink wink. Um for the next one. And then and that I would say would be the planning commission. Yes. Right? Yes. I did look up the definition of the word undertake, though. It's a great word. Uh, can you, David, can you clarify the capacity limitation and expansion opportunities for water service? I mean, is this essentially a parallel path to getting sewer in, or is this, are we looking at doing a, a where the water? Sources available that can supply more people. Can, can you define that just a little bit? I think it's a I think it's a bit of a parallel path because we've heard that in some situations that uh, where some properties are served by water that they actually don't have adequate water pressure to provide provides our fire 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 suppression um, and <clears throat> and perhaps other you know industrial uses so. I think we need to look at, you know, where do we have water in what kind of form and capacity levels and where do we where do we not? Well, the also the engineering, we already have the study underway for the wastewater. So yeah. this is kind of like in the queue yeah. right behind, but that's the proper next step. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be the planning office, right? Well, to find a grant. Well, exactly. That's figure out the work plan. It should be the planning office. Right. Uh, so I just moved down to the next one, prepare zoning changes for housing. So, we had previously said that we did not want to use the phrase affordable housing. We wanted to use the phrase housing that is affordable mm -hmm. to a wide range of incomes or something to that effect. Yes. Um, and that seems like that would be us actually the planning commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Develop an official map for public facilities, infrastructure, roads, and trails. Is that, would you say that's the planning office or the planning commission? Planning commission. Planning commission, okay. Kind of like with the many of these are going to be the planning commission and the planning office. Bring it on. Or, yeah. do, you, or do you want to? Let's go. Uh, well, they're a little bit different. Uh, do you want to list the both of them, or would you no, want to just no? The that's just the planning commission. One person. 
Okay. Do we want to include the supporting committees as? No. No. We know who they are. Who they are. <clears throat> Do we want to assign? We have their phone numbers. Do we no. Want to assign them no, them? because it's going to be our job to call them up and say we yeah. need your help you because know, we're on because we're on the paper. Okay, the next one I had a, a question about the content of incorporate into the capital plan acquisition of properties that are key opportunities for land conservation, community infrastructure, this came directly from you, Jim, economic development, roads and trails, and housing that's affordable. Um, so my question about that is that it's almost like a step before that, which is we currently have in Jericho a capital budget. And the town plan talks about the need, need to really develop a capital program. And some people in the town went to like a training about it. It was like a year ago and nothing's happened. And so it seems like before you would incorporate XYZ into a capital plan, the real item that should be on this list is to actually in, um, uh, embrace or migrate into a real professional capital improvement program, which would include acquisition of land, but I don't even know that that would be the number or the or development of community infrastructure. I don't even know that that would be the number one task. Like, exactly. That This is my suggestion. I'm interested to hear what other people think about that. That's what I thought when I was reading that was a little bit like the card before the horse. Maybe just incorporate into the capital plan funds for potential acquisition of Let's get money first and we can figure out what we're spend it on. Right. Or do we have a capital plan? <clears throat> we have a we have something called a capital plan. We have a five-year capital Excel. budget that Excel. is mostly Excel. lifted, yeah. li limited to paving right. and trucks. Things we always Maintain. do. And a little bit of sidewalk yes. stuff. Maintaining right. Maintain. It's not Maintaining the status quo. Well. Right. Growing. It's so. not. All this stuff in this plan need a capital plan. Correct. And the planning commission in Jericho has really never traditionally been involved in the capital plan. And we think we should change that mm -hmm. so that this plan and all of our plans can become the cap can be fed into if, the capital plan. Okay. Uh if the select board had five people, would your opinion on that change? No, because no. Um, lots of towns have the planning commission per prepare and really participate in the capital plan. If okay. mm -hmm. the town had a town manager with financial background, would your opinion change? No, I would think it would be easier. We'd have less work to do. It would be we would we would if the plan, the town plan, would be like the blueprint and the priorities. We wouldn't have to be necessarily in the weeds as much. Mm -hmm. But who has the expertise to create this capital plan? Well, there's no, two parts to it, our, not me. No, our, but there's training and our, the, we have a treasurer, the town can hire consultants. Like that's what the town needs to grow up and figure out how to be, how to get this stuff done, which is I big, totally agree. Right. Like, well, a, a part of what we have to do in the planning commission is identify things like where should sidewalks be? Okay, we've identified them now in your capital plan to get money to put them in there. Where should we have underground wire uh, electric utilities? That's up to us to identify. That then becomes something that the town plan and the capital planning say how much it's going to cost, but here's where it goes. We're identifying what has to change. Right. It was and, depressing. And then how much it costs to do that it's going to be up to somebody who knows what that had a budget for those things. It was really depressing reading volume two and having stuff from like a study from 2011 and a study from 2012. Right. right. And it's like nobody's but, looking at that shopping list. But part of this needs to, in my opinion, is the town needs to have somebody who understands how, in a, in a big picture way, 
how to leverage the town's financial assets mm -hmm. into spending that makes sense for the development of the town. And yes. that is not gonna us. be us. True. There's I don't think there's anybody in the town right now who is that person. Right. So but we need that should it. be, I think that's what this should be. That's what I'm saying. That's what I right. want this action step to be. But it's finding the person. I think it's we have to um you know it's like a company you can't just be responsible on on a person we need the process and the culture and the policy and that's what a capital improvement program would provide would be a platform where committees are involved and it's a it's a longer term conversation and we'd be looking at the town plan every quarter and you would know all the assets of the town and all the depreciation schedules of all of those assets. And you would be, you know, now we're like, oh, we need a new town garage. It's like, really? We didn't know we would need a town garage 15 years ago. Like, why wasn't that in the in the plan? So I think this action step needs to be that. And it's not us. I, I agree with you that it's that that's not going to be us, except that we should be participating to a much greater degree than we ever have before. Well, who do you suggest would take the lead on that? that that's, not, that's not addressing what we have here, which is key opportunities for land conservation, infrastructure, economic with roads and trades. Those are those are the recommendations for investments the town should make to improve the quality of life in the town and the livability of the town which once those are agreed, then the finance person comes in and says, this is what we need. Okay, we're building uh, roads and trails. Um, here's what the 20 year maintenance schedule looks like. But, in but a, we are the ones who identify we need a road here. Okay, but in a town that has been spent the last 50 years maintaining what it has and not being proactive going forward, money will be a rate limiting factor. And if there was somebody or some group out in front of that that said, I know it's going to cost that much money, and I know it's a lot of money. This is how we pay for it. Yeah. Then that smooths the way for everybody to say yes. I, I completely so, agree with you. I, I, I'm just I'm pointing out sure that, that before we have someone who tells us how to spend the money, we need to have someone understand where we should spend it. Which is the the plan? Right. So this is all in the first year ago. Which is so not defining. Kind of, which is not saying where should you spend. Right, but the one before is an official map, which answers those questions. That's the in large part the where, not yeah. in, entirely, but in large part. But that's part. a big part of where where those roads and sidewalks and everything are going to be identified. However, if we're not going to wait for that to be done, we still could have a more forward thinking capital plan, even if it just has placeholders and we could move some of the money around, even if it just says this many dollars for this, this many dollars for that over the next 10 years. Like you said, HLEs do it all the time. They're like, we're and in some time in the next 10 years, we're all going to need new roofs. In 15 years, we're going to need to pave the parking lot. In 20 years, we're going to need to redo the swimming pool and the tennis courts. You can have those placeholders and not know exactly, right? Like you're guessing in 15 years how much that it's gonna cost. Mm -hmm. We still can build that in a capital plan. We can still put a placeholder in a capital plan for wastewater that says this many million dollars. We don't have to have the entire wastewater study dissected and agreed upon to put a placeholder in a capital plan for, for wastewater or municipal water. Right. So, so my guess is that looking at that list of responsible parties, that we should be the one who's responsible. Because I don't think in the current setting, anybody else is going to step up and take the lead. So I think the way it's currently being done is that John works with the, so John and Paula work with the select board. And maybe John could inform us all a little bit more about that process. Would that be helpful since he's on, yes. on the meeting? Yeah. John, I hate to put you on the spot. Um, he's still there. If he's still there. <laughs> John. Oops, sorry, bad connection. <laughs> Hello, I am here. I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to eat and feed kids at the same time. <laughs> sorry to put you on the spot. Did you hear the conversation that we're having? 
I didn't. I, I didn't. I was checked out for the last couple minutes. Okay, then never mind. Yeah. So we'll come back to you. Before we worry about who's responsible, yeah, let's get consensus on what we think the action step should be. So, okay, you've heard the discussion. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this could be described a little bit more broadly about migrating to the to have a more sophisticated approach, which I personally think is going to take a while, probably going to take two or three yeah, or four budget know. cycles, yes. because the training that we went to, were you here then? No. Who, you went to that training. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a heavy lift. It was a big project if you really wanted to do it right, but it was step by step by step. I mean, it was kind of like you go around, you count how many tables you have, and Obviously, I don't want to work at that level, but somebody has to work at that level. And that's what, you know, that's what you do in your house. That's what mm -hmm. you do in your company. And and so our, we would participate and contribute to that. And so I think what, what we're saying is we want the town to transition from a five-year capital budget to a comprehensive capital program. Mm -hmm. Can we right. just write that? Which right. is in a strategy. It's in currently in one of our strategies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can we right. just write that? It you, says because really we all know we want to do, we want to do it to get the things on this list. Right. But it it almost doesn't matter. We're right. talking about really fundamentally changing how the town plans right. 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 for money. I, I think that's a wonderful suggestion, Sarah, because it takes us away from land conservation, infrastructure, economic growth. It's just everything just like we are, picture. yeah it's way bigger picture it's like we're doing right. it like 25 years ago let's let's catch up right with how people and, correct and i guess uh, i would think the select board, board should, should be responsible i think it's the town administrator role with the select board mm -hmm. okay. i still think it's the, the town administrator yes but not the select board. yes okay, okay. But, that's a good idea but my question is it seems like these people are already stretched thin so are they are they in a position, and I'm just asking, are they in a position to actually do that? I understand that they should be, but are they? Well, when you were at that training, yes, I think like maybe not all of it, maybe not they're not going to get an A plus the first year, but it's time to start. Like yeah. a year ago when they had the training. And we walked away with like, here's the first three things you can do so that you can start to move in this direction, right? Mm -hmm. Did you think it, it was daunting, but it wasn't. No, I agree with you. I don't think it should be the plan. So it's just the select board. Yeah. Or just well, I Linda's saying the town, town administrator. administrator. Okay. Wake up, Especially John. since he wasn't John, do you have a comment <laughs> regarding that? Are you still Yeah, there? I do. I'm sorry. I had to I had to move upstairs. Things are getting a little bonkers. Um, yeah, I think the uh, you know, what you and I discussed Linda was trying to get support from CCRPC to develop a comprehensive capital plan. And I do agree that I would be instrumental in helping develop that budget. I also think the treasurer would be involved, obviously, being Brian, and it would be, I think we would approach it similar to the way we currently approach budget building, which is having um, having <laughs> our financial coordinator, having Paula in her role, and, you know, working working collectively to develop something comprehensive with uh, outside guidance. Can we uh, come up with a specific targeted goal for year one for that? Could could you or do you want me to? Is that what are you <laughs> well, asking? Can we? I we're we're can working we... on this one year plan, and so my question is: Is there something specific we can put in here so that at the end of this time next year we can look at the box and say, "Yeah, we did that." You're the planning commission. You could put whatever you want in there. Well, I, I no, find it be realistic though. Sure. And I, I um, yeah, I, I, I can't sit here and tell you what would be realistic, honestly. There's a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of moving parts currently. It may be that 
expecting that to be accomplished in year one is too much. Maybe it needs to go to within three years. It doesn't mean you couldn't do it within one year, I, but you're giving yourself the time to. What I would I, say would be realistic in the, in the first year, Linda and I have had discussion about uh, and with the select board about uh, capital development of a capital plan being our UPWP project for the coming year which would be the, the first step in uh, initiating support from CCRPC and getting uh, their guidance in creating a framework for a long-term comprehensive plan. Okay, so, so let's put that for you. Yeah, initiate, initiate the process to. Yeah. I, I initiate the process to expand the capital plan into a comprehensive capital program that incorporates a wide range of public investments that'll be necessary to develop future public facilities and infrastructure. By engaging with CCRP. And implement this town, implement this town plan. Yeah, by engaging with CCRPC at the very beginning. And initiate the process with CCRPC because it's specific. It's specific. What's the very next step? But it also ties into the goals of the plan because five years from now that you want the capital plan to be accomplishing other things. And Susan, I, I agree with you. Coming out of the, uh, the, the training that we did collectively, uh, I think we walked away with a lot of information regarding uh, pieces and parts of a town plan, uh, what the town plan can help communities accomplish, uh, sort of a, a structural understanding of how, I'm sorry, I'm saying town plan, uh, capital budget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. How, a cap how a capital budget works, how it, uh, how it works in conjunction uh, with the town plan and helping communities uh, realize their long-term vision. But mm -hmm. the, your, uh, your point, Chris, I think about the uh, the people power involved in uh, executing that and continuing to move the ball downfield. Um, I think that's where we uh, need some further guidance and help. Mm -hmm. But one of the things, David, you framed in the effective government chapter, you talked about the concept of continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. and, conti and this is like a great example. like. In five years, it's going to be a lot better and being realistic. Like we have to, but we have to start now. We can't wait and we have to be realistic and then continuously improve it and get better and better. Yep. Is, exactly. is there a difference between capital plan, capital budget, and capital program? Mm -hmm. Because I don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we should be make well, sure we're using the right words. So. In, in, a, in kind of generic municipal terms, um, it's referred to as a capital budget and program. So it's typically a one-year budget and a five-year program or plan. So within one year, this is the money we're spending. And then over the course of the next five years, this is money we are anticipating needing to spend. And what are the likely, what's that amount-ish? What are the likely funding sources that are going to help us pay for that? Some of those things are known. You, you, the town's issued a bond. It's going to, you know, pay out over a period of time. So those are hard numbers. Other times, it's more ballpark until you develop the details. But so you were talking great. about a shift into a capital program, so which is you kind of look at like what are the criteria for your decisions. Who has the authority to make different capital decisions? What's operating? What's capital? Like all of that is written down as part of your capital program. We don't have it all written down. We just kind of everybody knows how it's done here. Um, and but they did also say that you extend beyond the five years to start having the placeholders, but those aren't necessarily officially in that in the five-year window. Yeah, and one of the important parts of that decision-making process, and this is where the Planning Commission has an important role, is the prioritization of those investments, that you have an important role to play in advising the select board about which investments need to happen uh, first or others, or which investments uh, really aren't helping to support the rec the intent and recommendations of the town plan. 
we shouldn't be extending sewer this direction because the town plans doesn't anticipate us, you know, growing that part of the town, those, those types of things. So it's process, it's money. And the other part of this, Chris, what is kind of expanding the, the scope, what kinds of things are you spending money on? It's more than just roads and bridges. It's, you know, other kinds of infrastructure that the town is responsible for. It's the town's own buildings and facilities. It's, you know, it, right. it might be future land acquisitions for affordable housing or land for conservation, septic, whatever it is. For yeah. Like, if we don't do this, this capital program, we have no business thinking that we're going to, like, buy and build infrastructure so, for septic. Okay, but so the, the rewriting of this, does it specifically, I can't remember what you said, does it specifically say capital program? Uh, I... I said initiate the process to expand the capital plan into a comprehensive capital program. Well, maybe we should say the current capital budget, mm -hmm. because that's really all it is, okay. right. into a comprehensive capital okay. program. And I think it's usually called the capital improvement program. In, in, yeah. in the strategy, we, we refer to it as comprehensive capital improvement program. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we should mirror that language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Language. Okay, so then I had two other items that I thought were missing from this list. In the first year. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of them was probably not important enough to be on the list, but I was wondering what Sabina thought about this, which is to rechar recharter the trails committee into a real head bike trails committee. Did I just say that? Yeah, recharter the trails committee. Do we need to put that on here? Or are they going to do that anyway? But the reason I thought to put it on here is because pedestrian safety, bicycle safety is so prominent in the plan yes. that if we don't like really highlight this as a big important item and put them on the hook to do it and to really change their mindset. And so I wanted, I thought it would be good. So into a what? Recharter the trails committee into a comprehensive like that word <laughs> uh multimodal well, or pedestrian safety or yeah is it bike, bike ped is it non-motorized interconnectivity multimodal multimodal the language so that in the chapter on I might make uh I might make a suggestion having chaired that committee the because we have a bike pedestrian uh addendum to our town plan it may make sense for alignment purposes to have it called the Bike Pedestrian Trails Committee. Yeah. Or, you know, we use- Right. I we know have a bike ped study. So here's something that I've been thinking about, the relationship between these action items and then what shows up in the strategies and objectives. And I was leaning towards that if it shows up in the action items, it should be discussed somewhere as a strategy or somewhere in the chapter. Like, and I know we don't want to add text, but it, it feels more connected to me. If I see an action item, I'm like, oh yeah, I read about that. It makes sense that this is a priority. But I don't think we said anything about rechartering that community. And it, maybe it's just a sentence or two, but something kind of meant to, you know, make the connection between the two parts of the document. Mm -hmm. That'd be my job. Keep the consistency there. Yeah. And, and I can do that in volume two. Because I'm editing volume two right now. So I could include, you know, a sentence about that that, you know, if if you want. I agree that it's really important and that it's definitely something that can be accomplished in year one. Yes, definitely. Actually, they were process. Sabina was already helping them with like how to recharter themselves with some language. And okay. is that a trails committee responsibility? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they do name it. The new responsibility. Well, but they're not named that yeah, yet. So, yet. So right. It would be their... the, and they'll have to get it all approved by the select board. Yeah. But yeah, they're they've got the ball. It's their ball. They've right? got the ball. Right. Okay. And then the last one was to update the natural resources overlay because the town plan will give us some new maps and it should be a very quick and easy step 
to go from the maps to a new NRO map and maybe a couple of language changes in the text. Will in that zoning. require more mapping and more ground truth to do that? That's what they're, that's what we're, we'll have. Yeah. We just have to, David explained to us that we have, we, we have to make it so we have here. It's that we're gonna have new maps in the town plan. We have to have the zoning go. Oh, use the new maps, and that's a zoning step. I think it's anything within five years section. So oh, it is. It is. Move it forward. Well, so I guess, or we'll just do it sooner because we can do it within five years if we do one to three five years. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so never mind. Sorry. But it has to wait for the new zoning of regs anyway. Right. It would be a new zoning reg. Yeah. So that's that's that's, that's new within five years that our zoning rates expire. No, zoning no. doesn't expire. Mm -hmm. What's this? What's the state mandate for how often we need to renew them? There isn't one. Mm -hmm. It's the only it applies to the plan every eight years. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody have anything else that they thought was missing from the short term list, Wendy? Especially if you were doing some checking back and forth. I, I want to be realistic about what we can yeah. achieve. So I think it's a, it, it's a, it's a great list. So what about, uh, again, going back, um, expanding town staffing? Okay, so he, David, drafted that, I think, within three years. Because remember in our last meeting, Heidi was saying, you know, maybe it might Take it one in a cycle. Um, we still have to do the research about exactly what's what all the steps are. So we're not going to do anything on that in the next twelve months. No, because within is talks about the end date, not the starting date. Okay. So if we can get it done sooner, we can get it done sooner. When we're not obligated. Chris, are you thinking of breaking it into two or three components with one component to be done in the first year? Yeah. I'm thinking of like let's get it done. So, so what what's the what first would be step? Component number one. I, I don't. Well, the first. I guess it depends on if it's a select board or a town manager. Which which one of those we're going after first? Well, there. In they either would... case, you'd be hard pressed to do it religiously within a year, right? Because they both require a public vote. I mean, right now they're doing this staffing audit. Is that what it's called? Uh, that is something that we are trying to accomplish, but I don't think we have a contract to do it yet. John's been investigating that. So maybe yeah. that's that, the is that a, that's a required step. I don't think, I think it's think required, it's but diligence. it could be helpful to really take a close look at everything that we have going on in town to identify, like really drill down where the needs are from an outside perspective. As long as the outside perspective understands that we're interested in moving from a period of maintenance to a period of development. Mm -hmm. The very first assignment we would give them is to read our new town plan. Okay, so maybe the first step would be engaging that consultant. Yeah, John, can you give us an update on that? Yeah, I can. So the, um, as I, I think I, shared with a couple people i i had discovered that uh nemric uh the organization that uh provides uh, a lot of the financial and public management software for the uh lister and appraiser's office they're based out of fairfax and i didn't even know they were in the business of doing uh governmental function audits uh, they, I saw a proposal they had uh, put together for the town of Londonderry, and I was like, bang, there we go. There's a way to have an objective third party come in, look at our uh, current uh, staffing, hold that up to what we have for uh, goals as, as dictated within the town plan, and yeah, help, help guide our thinking about where the gaps are in uh in human resources and uh lo and behold they've been terrible about communicating back i was put in touch with this guy who i've reached out to at least four times and have gotten crickets and i saw the uh, executive director at the town fair today and i did not get a chance 
uh, to speak with her, but I'm planning to reach back to her to see if we can make some headway. We do have, uh, I haven't seen it, but I have been told uh, that we have a, uh, a similar audit that was done seven or eight years ago, which in, in my mind is far outdated given uh, where we're hoping to, hoping to be five years from now. So can we list as a one year goal to engage with them? Oh, you you could. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not giving up, Chris. Excellent. That'll be a one a one month. You want to initiate the process of determining like specific staff roles and responsibilities. If that's the next step to to increasing our town capacity. Correct. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. If you if you guys are saying that that's the next step, then mm -hmm. yes, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So can we add an action step that captures that, David, what? to this within one about year? Process, Something right? about initiating the process to evaluate staffing. I think it's called a municipal audit. Yeah, just perform a municipal staffing audit, audit. To determine staffing requirements to fulfill the goals of the town plan mm -hmm. of this town plan. Yep. Something to that effect. Because it's gonna cost money. So I think for people to support that and to understand, you know, why we're recommending that. You know, we heard at the last meeting that the rationale around expanding the select board needs to be stronger. And that doesn't really cost anything. So if, if we're saying, you know, we need all these positions and all these roles and it's going to cost X dollars more, I think we have to build that case. I, with knowing what those roles are, how much they're going to cost, what other towns do. So it's ER campaign. Yeah. Step to validate that this is the appropriate course of action, or maybe not. Or right. maybe not. Right. I think it also sets up if we, whatever route we go, whoever ends up ultimately in charge, whether it's a five member select board and a town manager or whatever it looks like, then that person is equipped with this is this is the work and these are the roles that we have, and then they can actually work through changes instead of the normal six month onboarding process of learning who everyone is and what they do and what the current roles are, which you know then they can just come in and read the document. Um John has a stand up. Yes. Yeah I John I was basically gonna reiterate um the your final comments which um in conversation with the select board I think the attraction of having uh, an outside body come in and help with uh, the analysis and uh, determination of need is a, a critical part of selling uh, any expanded staffing uh, to the townspeople. We we need to be able to validate, uh, you know, how these positions function in other communities, how they're going to advance the goals as outlined by the town plan, and probably most importantly, what's the cost going to be to taxpayers? John, is the league uh, resource that you're working with as well? Um, so, no, but we there is some possibility there as well. The the Nemric was the um, the organization that I've been. Engaging David. I feel like Nemer is that the question? Email stuff right now. That might be why you're not getting a lot of returned phone calls. Boy, I, I really don't know. It's been given how pervasive uh, 
their software is to municipalities all over the place. I'm a little, little amazed by the lack of response. I've got to be honest, but um, again, I'm going to keep after it. There could right, be we, have to move, we have to move on. Um, yep. I think we have the point captured. SJ, I see you have your hand up. I'm not going to call on you um, because we at, we're asking for members of the public to just hold their comments until we get through. We really have to get through the chart. We invited John to participate as in his role as the town administrator. So um, I want to make sure that we do have time to hear your comments. So I'm going to move us along. Um, so the next section are the items within three years, which is kind of like the biggest list, which you would expect. So we could, now that we know how to do our review, we can go a little bit faster. Um, so the first one is zoning changes for by right businesses and housing in line with the recommendations of the commercial district master plan. So that's the planning commission. Yep. Do we have any I'm just going to go unless anybody says stop, okay? Um, undertake the development of individual village master plans and zoning standards for the corners and the center and adjacent village neighborhoods. Um, I think, to me, that would almost be like the planning office mm -hmm. because we're going to need a grant. We're going to, that seems like, there's going to need to be some scoping and definition before it really gets to the planning commission's agenda. Um, new set of town road and village. Well, I, I wonder, if Michael, sort of wrench the request. Now, isn't part of individual village master plan something that we as planning commission are supposed to do? So we need we need some help with parts of that, but it seems that that's, it should be on us. It will be on us, but the person who has the ball. To make it happen, there's pre work that has to happen before it ever will come to our table. Should we then define what pre work is first rather than the end result? Well, that's why the word undertake is a brilliant word because <laughs> if you look it up, that's exactly what we're going to do. And that is the next step. And the planning office can define the project, scope the project, figure out what it costs, who else has done it, look at the master plan we already did for the commercial district and for Riverside. There's a lot of technical work to, my perception is, I'm just making this up, <laughs> seems like to make the soil for it to be ready for us to, to be working on it. And I think Linda, yeah. Yeah, the assistance of other people can do a lot of it before it needs our attention. True. But I would also say that about most of the other tasks that are assigned to the planning commission, like zoning changes, official map, and things like That's that. True. Those are all things that, you know, so depending on how you want to kind of draw those lines. We don't necessarily need a grant for every zoning change, and we as a group, we've done zoning changes, so we kind of know how to do it. As a group, we haven't ever done a village master plan before. Um, so it's that's definitely how we, a larger undertaking yeah, so that's than kind of, some of these pieces. But that's how I kind of differentiate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever works for you. Okay. Um, did you tell my husband that expression? That's <laughs> really great. Okay, develop a new set of town road and village standards that incorporate green street standards and technology, prepare for increases in volume and velocity of stormwater and associated policies for when and how the town accepts new streets and roads. So my question about that was, should it also say, should this also, so this is very specific around like, stormwater and infrastructure, but should it also be complete streets? Or is that diluting it and keep your bike head stuff separate? No, I think you, back to one of your favorite words, I think you want to make it comprehensive. I think you want to look at, you know, your street standards need to include complete streets, green streets, process, right. you know, all of that. Right. Okay, so if that's the case, then it seems like the follow-on text needs to be expanded to talk about you know safety and users. But on the other hand, 
the follow on text doesn't have to repeat all the information that we just read all the chapters about. So it's a matter of like balance, like keeping the text in the chart brief enough that we get what the action item is, but not so explanatory that it's just a rehash of what's already in the chapter. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the responsible party for that, to me, I don't know, is like the town administrator. Yes, I would agree. Yes. Yeah, so Not all these other people. Yeah. David, um, quick point of clarification. So all of this sounds like it would fall within public work standards. They are, yes. And, but some of it, and again, a, a lot of this is new to me, the, uh, the, the, the technologies, the, um, uh, yeah, the incorporating green street standards, that sounds more uh, planning based than public works execution based. So I'm just trying to understand. Does all of that fall on if 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 in your your all opinion, all of that falls under public work standards, then yes, that is that is my bailiwick. Yes, they it all falls under public works standards. But uh, it is a broader set of, uh, of standards and considerations rather than simply, you know, how many inches of gravel, how many, you know, how many inches of, of asphalt uh, typical basic road standards are. So there's a very much a planning uh, expertise component to it, but Typically, it would be something that would fall in, in a public works, be the responsibility of a public works department uh, to undertake in collaboration with the planning office. But, but just to clarify, John, we're not asking you to have the answers. We're asking you to take the ball. Understood. Yeah, and it would be. Forward, so. No, understood. And that would be obviously a collaborative effort with yeah. uh, mm -hmm. ro road foreman. Um, yes. And we're also we're also fortunate in that uh, Justin Willis, who a number of you may know, is uh, was recently appointed to the Development Review Board. Okay. And Justin yeah. wrote the uh, Public Works uh, specification standards for the town of Richmond. That's so a good, great resource. Yeah. We have yeah. a very, very valuable resource uh, in in Justin. Okay, so the next one is update the village center designations. But didn't we just update them? We or two of them. We did. However, this is required to be in your plan in order to continue maintaining them. Okay. So we need to have it in there. Okay. And they do need to be renewed every. Is it five Those years? Those are every five years. Every yeah. five oh, years. Okay. Five. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that's what you're thinking of uh, yeah, with so, the so five year. If we just did them, um, this is in the right place to be doing it again in five years. Yes. Yes. Well, so this is within three years. So should this well, be? Because they're not all at the same time. They're right? not. We just did Jericho. I did Jericho Center when I first started. So maybe in January. And then I just did Riverside like last month. So Jericho Corners will be the next one, and I don't know the date for that. But it's probably but it, within three it's years. It's probably within three years. <laughs> so, and but I think it makes sense to keep them all together. together. And yeah. we're going to consider additional designations for the neighborhood development area, but depending on what happens with the legislation right. on the designations. So that's why it's within three years. Mm -hmm. And so would you say that's the planning office? Yeah. Seems like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Consider amending the town charter to allow for the appointment of a manager. That's a select board thing. It's a town vote. The select board has to put in front of the town to vote. Right. I can assure you there's going to be resolutions in front of this town meeting because the public's going to act as a select board. Okay. okay. The okay. next one. Wait one second. So uh, we don't, what, what we said. I think 15 minutes ago is we don't necessarily know if that's the appropriate next step. 
Does it have to be in the in? But that has to be in the charter in, in order for it to be a possibility. Right, and this is in the one to three range. So if we decide after one year, it says consider. So okay, right. <laughs> okay, we're hedging our bets. But that is a select again. Sure. Yeah. 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 Right. Sure. Okay. But very much like our capital comprehensive plan conversation, we need a placeholder. Okay. Okay, and then the the next one is. Uh, bringing forth for vote the election of two members of the select board as already provided for in the charter. So should, should that I something... say consider? If we're Probably. really hold to this idea that we don't know yet. Um, it's really the, the preamble, the precursor to that is determine if a five member select board is appropriate for Jericho. Well, sure, but we don't- Determine that. No, well, to Wendy's point, we haven't we've decided it, but that doesn't mean that it's objectively true. In in the strategy, we say consider expanding the select board from three to five members and to seek to diversify the backgrounds and experiences of the members. So it says consider. Yeah. Okay. So then, then this should say consider. I think we should do it, but I think to be consistent, we should say consider doing it. Right. Well, right. well I, and we want Sarah to vote yes this time. We all agree that yes. it seems to make That's sense, true. but we are we are basing that on emotional rather than factual pieces in front of us. Oh, actually, we say we say, we say we yeah. no, no, I, no, I think we have a lot of in we become emotional about it. Yes, but yeah. that's not the basis of the feeling. Right. But I think for me. It, for me, it's a capacity conversation. Yeah. yeah. They, right. Which we're they, not going to repeat. We don't have time to have a conversation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is a minor thing, but in the strategy, we say reconsider. Because it's been up before. Because it's been up before. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, okay, the next one is the Affordable Housing Committee and the Jericho Community Development Corp works together with a um, bunch of people, market participants and residents to identify parcel policies and funding. So that's in the like resolution. That's in the resolution. So that should be the Affordable Housing Committee. That's basically like do the work. Do the outreach, make it and they're the, they're the ones who should got the ball. Yep. We need a little football at the top of this <laughs> as like an icon. Um, and then conduct a formal study. Aren't all studies formal? We probably don't need to worry about formal. Conduct a study about child care needs and barriers to operating child care in Jericho. That I'm I'm I don't know who's the right responsible party. If it landed on the on the in the planning commission lab, I'm wasn't I'm not sure I would know what the first step would be. I would be like, well let's talk to somebody at UVM and you know, but I wouldn't I really wouldn't know what how to mm -hmm. besides like who going looking for grants. Out of our out of our all of our committees, what committee okay. I would think the school board would be the right people to do that. Well you assigned it to us. Do you think we should know how we should learn and do it? I, I think it's, you know, it's likely to be something that is you or it's Linda. All right. I mean, the, is it the Community Development Corporation? Certainly something that falls within the realm of, of economic and community right. development right. functions. Or, or how does it impact diversity, equity, and inclusion is a question that I have. Yes. So yeah. there, there are a number of people who have fingers in that box. So mm -hmm. how does that affect the school board and the school system? So everyone is a stakeholder. Yes. All these right. are stakeholders. Right. Right. But who is the driver? Well, if it's who going to be a study, we're going to need a grant. And Linda is, seems to be the grant expert who's been the herd of the cats. OK, so planning office. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. This is good for you. Okay. This is good for you. I'm reluctant to raise my hand anymore. Okay. No, we have fun for years. Linda, I'm inflating the life raft. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then we're now we're on to within five years. Uh no, there's there's a couple. 
There's one more on this page. Education resources to help landowners learn about opportunities to create new housing units. That's, That's affordable. probably affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did my two-sided printing. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Okay, education and resources to opportunities to create new housing units. Affordable housing committee. Yes. Yep. Develop Jericho Climate Action Plan. Sounds like a grant to me. Uh, it's conservation commission. Um, um, energy so committee or no like energy task force. Sorry. Climate action, vulnerability, and resiliency. It's probably me. That's also about planning office. office. It's about storm water. It's about so much. Yeah. yeah. Interns. <laughs> um. And updating the 2015 transportation and pedestrian bicycle plans. That should be the rename, like yeah. head. Yes. Committee, Uber committee. Yes. Yeah. Trails committee, AKA. No, the committee formerly known as the Trails Committee. <laughs> the X committee. Well, okay. the, there's a. There's a, there's a bike ped component to that, but there's also, um, and the plan talks about this, is really a mobility plan. Plan. You need to look at all of these modes together. So is it just uh, a renamed bicycle and pedestrian trails committee or? No, but they can take a lead. Yeah, yeah I, I see them as taking a lead on this. They'll, they'll work with other groups, mm -hmm. but it's about interconnectivity. So can you walk to a bus stop? Can you walk to a sidewalk? Can you ride your bike to a bike rack to get onto mass transit or something? And do you need new street segments to connect yeah. dead end streets mm -hmm. and other things? So it's, it, again, it's more than the well, non-motorized. Yes, but the bike pad would be the one. So I, I think would be identifying where the opportunity was. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a the there's regional there's regional well, support um yeah we get a grant for that as well and <laughs> there, there's also a there's also a uh countywide interconnectivity plan so we want to think about where yeah. trails intersect I, I have to agree with David. yeah all right planning awesome nice try <laughs> nice try okay. okay now we can go to five years you, can I bring up another? Yes, thing that may or may not be appropriate for within three, but a goal that I have not heard yet is one about pursued program alternatives to both single occupancy vehicles and mass transit, such as micro transit, ride sharing, park and ride, and shuttles to serve residents of all abilities. That was a strategy in the infrastructure chapter. Right. And I would include that in this plan we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we did hear very succinctly from I forget from whom that we that there should be a micro transit pilot mm -hmm. in that the plan. Was yeah, maybe Wayne. Wayne. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's different than updating yep. the plan. Yep. It could be almost like a way to garner publicity in favor of an updated plan. Is that one of our tip top things though? I was wondering if like volume been... one. It is I was in volume one. Okay then yeah. that's where it lives on this list. So, so within three years? Yes, Sabina. Houston, I'm sorry, I'm having a problem here. I am running out of battery and I forgot my plug. And I'm showing it on the screen. So when you have can you borrow this plug right here? I was gonna suggest that I here. try it with it. Put it on here. Well or just take the, the power. Just take the, the power cord. Oh, you want to just take the power? Um on this side. Uh, just it's it. this right. Yeah. I'll try it. Okay. And Let's hopefully this works. works. So David, are you okay to add a slip? Initiate a micro do you want to go on another side? Project. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to crawl under the table. I can't do any crawling. I'm sorry. Oh, you got it. Nice work. We're Maybe that should be combined with that action item of the updating the plan. 
I'd say not if you want it to happen independently. Oops. I think if it's yeah. something that's important that you want to have you want to have happen, I would call it out on it. Okay, because you have a tri town transportation study or you had feasibility around it and so that yeah. would be most feasible. To be sure. yeah. And I know we do, we did hear, we got information oh, from yeah. somebody who gave us other towns that they had, they had yeah. done it. And that was in collaboration with the DEI committee. No, I was thinking it was in collaboration with Underhill and Cambridge. That oh, tried yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Who's the lead on that? Me, probably. Are we four right? Okay, five years. We're almost done. Yes, we're on the five year page. Yes. Okay, so we're on the five year page, which is the shortest one, right? Yeah. Um okay, up back to zoning, update development to encourage low impact development and green stormwater infrastructure. Are we gonna need to do that? Wouldn't it would not it would would not it be we covered that on the road section. But if we do the public it, works update, shouldn't the zoning stop talking about those details and just refer to the public works standards? Because right now, some stuff is in the zoning because the public works is so far behind. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, they conflict and they overlap and applicants have to look in two places to find out what standards they have to meet. So wouldn't we strip out all of those technical details primarily from zoning and refer to public works yes. five years from now? Yes, but um, because the what we were talking about before were specifically, you know, street standards, street and sidewalk kinds of standards. This this would include uh, these are really stormwater um standards that would apply to any impervious services oh site standards yeah. mm -hmm. not just road standards right. mm -hmm. oh, okay okay um provisions to protect slopes ridge lines and scenic resources incentivizing net zero siting updating the nro so i can take that out because you just added that separately yeah because mm -hmm. i think it'll be it should be pretty straightforward mm -hmm. um because of the mapping and then provisions regarding this other stuff. So that's just kind of like a zoning cue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it says including, so we, we might have other stuff on the list. So yeah. that seems like it would be us. Options for re-establishing a town tax stabilization program to help protect natural resources and working land. So I had a question about this because the tax stabilization program is like only one of many methods. Mm -hmm. And back to you, Wendy, in the strategies, mm -hmm. the strategy is written more broadly, or it, it includes it more it encompasses more things than just tax stabilization. So this should probably mirror the strategy yeah. better. Yeah. Um. And I had a question about the reestablishing. Is it, so there was one. There was there, there was one. And now there's it not. Okay. This it for a variety of reasons. Okay. So maybe it needs to be done differently mm -hmm. than it was done before. There's other techniques. Well, maybe change the wording from capital town, capital tax, state to. Something that's just a way to reduce taxes for, for landowners who treat land in certain ways. And there's other incentives too, yeah. like I don't know if Wendy if you can find it quickly, what it says in the in volume one. So I've, I've got it for that. Yeah, who would be the lead for that? The select board was historically in charge of the tax stabilization component, mm -hmm. but some of the other things that you talked about in volume were, were transfer of development rights, that's in the zoning regulations, impact fees and incentives around impact fees with kind of zoning, kind of policy, select word policy. 
it seems like we would be the ones to mm -hmm. initiate it. Well, yeah, do the research. But who's the most we... motivated? I feel like the Conservation Commission is the biggest beneficiary. It's their, it's it's the most aligned with their goals. That's not to say they're the most qualified, but I feel like it's the most aligned with their goals. That makes sense to me. Sure. And again, responsible isn't that's just the person holding yeah, the ball. Right, they right. they don't have to be the experts, right, they just have exactly. to coordinate the work. Yeah. And they don't have to do all they don't have to they do have to make it happen. Yeah. They have to find the resources right. and make it happen. Can you okay. agree with that, David? Conservation Commission. Yeah. Okay. Would would that also fall under the tax department though? But the no, tax the is only we we want a toolkit. Mm -hmm. In the past, the town had a tax thing and it didn't it wasn't the right hammer for the nail. So we want to look at the like Wendy's saying, let's understand the problems better, the motivation and find out what other tools there are. Maybe tax stabilization is one of them. Right. I feel like there's other avenues too where, you know, is everyone using the um oh my gosh, just left my brain. The current use plan program, who's eligible? The reality is that you can save a lot of money on your taxes by enrolling in current use, but you have to pay a lot of money to get the current use plan built. So maybe one of the recommendations of the Conservation Commission is grants so that those landowners who have 25, 20, 27 acres or more can actually get a plan built for their 27 acres or more. Right. Do you need a forester? Do you, you need a, a forester, management plan? A management plan. Yeah. Or they could also identify plans. Like if you have adjacent acres to a large parcel that's in current use, that's farmland, and you're having your neighbor pay your six acre field that's next to their hundred acres that's in current use, you can actually tack onto that. But mm -hmm. you have to pay for it to be added to their current use plan. Like it's it's a thing. But not everyone sees the clear avenues for that, and that is a clear avenue to conserve land. Mm -hmm. But it's a you got to pay money in to be eligible. Well, you're not conserving land. Sorry, yeah. you're not conserving land, but you're protecting working land. Protecting resources. Yes, protecting resources. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Then the. Well, I have a question about the next one. Yes, the next one was update. Jericho's open space plan, Sabina. So I'm not familiar with the open space plan. I can't, can't find it. Me neither. I had the same question. So I'm wondering what what are we referencing there? Maybe we should create one. Yeah. <laughs> Did you find one somewhere, David, that um, you reviewed? I haven't gone looking, but that came from someplace. In the previous plan, which maybe was from the other previous plan, is going to be in perpetuity. Work <laughs> jokes. Let, let me see what I can find. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right but, then, but certainly, if one does not exist, then yeah, we should create, create an open right. space plan. And it would be a planning commission lead. Yes. Uh, quick question Is that part of an official map or is that separate? Could be, but probably not. Um, depends on how ready and clear the town is about priority acquisitions, that if you know that there are three pieces of land that are the clear priorities for the town to acquire, then you could put it on an official map in order to protect them okay. until such time. Okay. But usually you wouldn't. So this would be a separate open space plan. It wouldn't be an amendment to an official map. Right. Okay. But it could be on the natural resources overlay. Mm -hmm. It'd be something that, you know, your natural resource overlay would, and the, the data behind that is informing, okay, Conservation Board Commission's done all this work to identify these resources, and ultimately you're defining what are what are our priorities for long term protection. Right. So you really want a prioritization plan. Uh, which is what they have. That's what they have in Williston. Right. So I I I follow that. Yeah. Track. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is it great for our 
Well, let's find out first right. okay. and then take it one step at a time. But yeah, if, if that's what we're talking about, then yeah. that would that would be the thing. And David, is an open space plan specific to like keeping farm fields looking like farm fields or is it for view sheds or is it both or is it something different? That becomes the first conversation you have in developing an open space yeah. plan is, is it specific to precious natural resources that mm -hmm. for long-term protection or is it about views or is it about all of this stuff? Okay. But an open space plan assumes that ultimately it's space that the town will own. Not necessarily. Could it, Not necessarily. it could be land that is uh, land that's conserved through easements with uh, one or more land trusts or other partners. Okay, but it it assumes conserved land. It generally. again, it depends if that's if. Well, that would be permanent protection. Right. Yeah. If you're looking for okay. permanent protection mechanisms. Right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Well, you could just buy development rights or something like that off the, Right. Like, like what happened in the Williston farm there uh, on the Mountain View Road. Right. And the town may facilitate that process. The land trust might. It might be, you know, it may be a donation of conservation easements and somebody's got to hold them, whatever that process may be. Okay. And then the last one was opportunities for an indoor recreation center. If that doesn't show up in volume one. And it doesn't show up as a strategy. It shows up a little bit in volume two. You're saying it's not a priority. We shouldn't put it on the list. So it I'm does show up in volume two. It does as a strategy. Like every, all the other ones show up as a strategy to make it to the list. As a strategy in that first box. You were yeah, in right? some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so if we're, it's one sort of out of the blue. Yeah. Yeah. It well, is mentioned in volume one, but I appreciate that maybe it's not. We did hear about it in the public feedback a lot, but I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and also we don't have a recreation office. So I wonder if the action step is to reestablish or establish the recreation committee since we did hear a lot of public feedback about recreation and the and volume one does talk a lot about social cohesion mm -hmm. and natural spaces and climate change and all those kinds of things that would drive indoor outdoor facilities but there's not any entity that's going to make this happen and there was one briefly fledgling mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people are under the impression that there's still one and a lot of people are disappointed pointed that there's not one and literally I've been to five select board meetings when they the select board has said would you like to run the recreation <laughs> committee and but I think if we want to establish a recreation committee, yeah. you can't just have an offhanded comment in a meeting mm -hmm. and think that it's going to happen. Yep. So maybe that should be the step. Establish. And establish. I don't know. I'm just brainstorming here. Spitballing. Sure. And well, but it seems like it should be within Trump, three that would not years. Be our responsibility. It's like what yeah. Mm -hmm. Within three years, maybe not within five. Yeah, if you're gonna do it. Within one. So what? Three, what's no, the three, action? Three. Define three. and charter three. recreation committee. Yeah. Define and what's the action? Well, is it that three charter? They have to have a charter what they're supposed to do. So you yeah, but when you say them. define in the charter, at least for me, that means a public vote go to the legislature, no. literally no. amending. No, 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 no. Charter. not that charter. Is it? So establish. So establish a recreation a recreation committee. Mm -hmm. But we have to say what we want them to do yeah. with a mandate to identify yeah. recreation opportunities in town. Would it be reestablish? Yeah, I think there there's already an existing <laughs> charter for the nascent uh, committee. Dust it off. Reestablish. Yeah, dust off. Dust off the charter. <laughs> and they had a, they had a study done by the University of New yeah. Hampshire. Stab it. it. They were kind of had a little bit of momentum. Well, yeah, we know from our surveys there's, there's huge interest. Yeah, yeah. Like that. right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. so, 
Okay, okay, is there anything missing from the five year list in volume one, knowing that there are many more things identified in volume two? So before you get there, Jericho's open space plan. I didn't define a Jericho open space plan, but in your current town plan, mm -hmm. strategy 4.2.2 says update and implement, implement an open space plan. So update suggests that there is one, mm -hmm. maybe, but, uh, but no one I've never, I've never seen nobody it. knows what it is. So maybe we'll go back to the 1973 plan for that. <laughs> maybe we'll just develop an mm -hmm. yeah. open space plan. Are we ready for that though? I, yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say, I don't know that then I think it should be on this list. Yeah. It could be in the volume two list. Okay. Because if we really want this to be like the marching orders, if we blow through everything on this list and just like bomb right into volume two, I'm all for it. Right. We're going to update the NRO that's on this list. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to identify housing opportunities relative to natural resources. We've committed to the parks. We've committed to development regulations that include green space, mm -hmm. even in the village centers. And an official map. Right. Mm -hmm. And an official map. So I think. So, so I have a, a bigger picture question. So take our first, first goal of year one, undertake the next steps regarding the municipal wastewater infrastructure. So is there beyond undertaking the next steps is there any way that we need to put in the town plan to make sure that that's not all that we do well that's what the official map also means for all that we do meaning the next steps is all that we do yeah. we don't do the steps after that right but i think you could say that about everything sure but then we, we talk about meeting the goals of the housing resolution we talk i mean it's the, the details of what comes next are talked about within the chapter. And and everything in here that says to about developing a plan is going to give you a whole nother list of things to do. You, you, you are never guaranteed. You will never be short of lots of things to do, way more than your resources capacity. Well, my question is, if, if, if you take any specific task like that, let's say we get that done in year one, Who's, how do we then, do we need a, a more formal way of following through with that yeah, for that's the next what, five years to make sure that it's actually yeah. moving forward? That's what the capital improvement program would, would outline the step, you know, you, it's not, it's going to be an engineering study, and then you're going to have to pick which village center goes first, second, and third, and then you're going to need to bond and so a whole year is going to be spent on educating the public on how to do the financing i don't know i'm just making it up but it's hard to know how those steps will unfold so that's why I, the question is do we have the structure in place to be the container for those next steps and i think the capital improvement program would help establish oh, yeah. that. I think, I think that and the official map, both of those trigger everything else will happen because the official map says, and this is where the future road is going to go. And this is where the future infrastructure for water and sewer is going to go. And then anytime anything happens in that space, you can't do it without considering what's on the official map because it's like, well, you know, we're ready to go, but we've got to actually lay all this infrastructure at the same time because it's in the plan. And then also, oh, it's in the capital plan, the comprehensive plan, great. So we have to keep moving. And if it's not in either of those places, then it's like, everybody else just fix that bridge, fix that culvert, something else washed out. We got to keep moving forward. We got to keep plowing the roads and then nothing happens. Well, so maybe, maybe uh, my suggestion would be that on a six month or annual basis, we take it upon ourselves to get this list and look at it and say, okay, this was done in year one, but what's next? Because I'm just afraid that it, of this big, you take an amorphous project and you assign somebody for the first step and then nobody's assigned beyond that first step in this town of 
lots of people and work, you know, many different committees and commissions and groups. Right, like, and volunteers. Who actually follows through with the next wastewater. You have to develop an office or people, a resource mm -hmm. that manages the right. waste that wastewater. Mm -hmm. Eventually, no, that, but so, somebody needs to keep poking. So, <laughs> so say, right. Do to, that to right. Chris's right. point is one of their actions within year one is for the planning commission to develop a process to annually, quarterly, whatever it is. Uh, evaluate the the progress of any of these implementation measures and report back to this to the select board. You know, think of the ECOS plan has a um, does a, a report each year of you know what's been accomplished. You know, do you want to do something like that that kind of holds yourselves accountable for keeping track of what's what's getting done, what's not getting done? Because I, I I would argue that one of the failures of previous town plans has not been so much the concept, but it's the follow through. And so I'm looking for a way to ensure that we don't do that again. Right, and we all aren't going to be here forever. So we right. need so it, everyone, we need a process that whoever is in your chair next right now. Right. But what happens a year and a half from now? Right. So I just I want know. some way to say, okay, we, we got to stay on them. I mean, I think we can develop a process for sure. I don't know how to reflect that in this mm -hmm. chart. I'm writing an action that says something like developing a process for regularly evaluating reporting on progress of mm -hmm. action items to implement this time. I'm wondering sure. too, if we should build on that sure. and make sure it gets yeah. into the town. Um, the town meeting bulletin, you know, so that we're That's accountable right, yeah. to yeah. To the, we do submit a report to the town, right? But report and mm -hmm. so including this audit mm -hmm. of progress in our report. I think so because we should mm -hmm. be able to say every year, okay, this was on our list. We did six of them. We didn't do these two. Our bad. This is why, or we understand why, or we're working on it, or we dropped the ball. Right. I mean, right. Um, and that would give us like a, a target, a timeline of when it has to be done, you know, every year so that you need that annual, what do they call that thing? The annual the annual report, report. the town report. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So David, you captured that. Mm -hmm. All right. We only have a few minutes left. We promise Jim and SJ and maybe um Glenn, if he's still with us, a little bit of time. I, mean, I can stop sharing, right? Uh, yeah, I think yes. so. Let me open the um, windows here to see everyone. Okay. Jim, a few oh, minutes. 30,000. Well, you need the microphone. Let me get over here. Hopefully, after hearing this discussion, you see that we are really trying to identify actions. And also, um, I would just encourage you to also look at volume two, which is 99% text, it is in a word format, and that is really where a lot of that very detailed regulatory language lives. Volume one is intentionally designed to be strategic, accessible for lots of users who don't have all the development experience that you do, but like sort of the average lay person 28 years old, I'm just doing a Jericho. What's the story here? Volume. So your your frustration with volume one in a way tells us that we were kind of successful with volume one because we wanted it to be user friendly because we know we have a lot of meat on the bones in volume two. That said, we don't want volume one to just be fluff and the next iteration that you haven't seen yet, that we haven't seen, we haven't published it yet, David's been working on, um, should be more, less travel brochure and more hardcore, this is what we're gonna do. So I hope that you will like it better than what you commented today. And I hope that you read it and say, oh, I said that. Oh, I told them that. I 
they listen to me. It's okay. not going to be, you know, it's not going to be the Jim Carroll document. It's not yeah. the Bible according to Jim Carroll. Just so you know, my ego is not engaged. So. Okay, but just so you know that there's been a lot of listening and a lot of work. And that what you and that volume one is purposefully designed to be user friendly, and and but we hope that it's not like fluff when you finally see it revised. Okay, sorry. I to give you some feedback, just real time. quick to what you just said that interrupted my comments. Sorry. Wendy's comments about strategy. You need three to five pages at the absolute most that tells what our objectives are and what we're where we're trying to get. And I'm going to give you a couple of high punch points. This document is literally not going to get you to where you want to go if you don't put anchors in that are legally clear cut unequivocal opportunities to define eminent domain. If you try to put interconnectivity in, a single person can cause all of your efforts to fail because you can't get across their property. You can't get through. That's one key point. So Eminent domain needs to be screaming at you, how are we building the base for eminent domain to be able to be used in the event that there's an obstruction that interferes with what's best for the community? Mm -hmm. That's number one. So strategy, and I'll give you an example. The absence of the overall strategy managed the way Wendy's doing it tonight. I believe the town just worked very hard, possibly made some contributions both to the library and to the hunt farm. The Hunt Farm was possibly your best opportunity to create a phenomenal recreational trail, scenic vistas. And as we're negotiating assistance and donating money, there was no guidance to any of the decision makers because the town plan is 250 pages that you need a simple document that says, hey, if we're working with this, the land trust, then we want a chair at the table to be able to achieve the one half page goals, which includes interconnectivity, which includes pathways, all of that other stuff. Because if you don't get it and you've got to go back after it later on, people won't live long enough. But just imagine if you could walk from the corner at the bottom of Stones Hill all the way down through those properties and come out on Plains Road, uh, Skunk Hollow. Just imagine what a phenomenal asset part of a connection for the community center. And if you connect community center with bike pad, they're all recreation. Tie these things together from the top with guidance documents. So every time somebody's making a decision, what are the other elements and the essential pieces that I need to know in order to do this correctly? We just spent 70 grand on an HVAC system, but did we say that that recipient is going to coordinate with the town library and they're going to do this and that we didn't so anyway going back everybody's talking about global warming and all that other stuff the principal way to reduce carbon and to reduce energy consumption is to use geothermal you guys don't have it anywhere this building could be geothermal this isn't like a big barn that the wind blows through if we don't use the ground to cool and heat as part of our strategy, part of our regulations, part of our direction, we're never going to get there. Um, so coming back to Chris Barnes as a miniature study, Chris brought up how we're going to get there with sewage. We can't do affordable housing. We can't do this. We can't do that because we've got all these people building individual septic systems and so forth. I suggest it's not just septic. It's septic water, fire protection, and access. Because when you go to do any of those things, you're building infrastructure in the ground. And if you're in the ground, you want to put in pipe. You want to put in pipe that may be used in 30 years or whatever, but you've got to put it all together. And right now, if you don't establish in the map where the septic resources are and the interconnectivity opportunity for municipal water, or more important, given the fact that the municipal water is being polluted pretty badly, for wellhead protections to be able to build private slash public well systems because you've got areas all over town. 
it, the town plan does not scream, how are we going to fix the problems for the people that are already here as we address the need for the people that we want to bring here? You have septic systems in the cone of all of the wells in Jericho Center. You have a 200 plus year old Jericho <laughs> Center with no fire protection other than on my property, and they got to drive the trucks. I plow the road so that they can get to the fire hydrant. These are things that don't come screaming out of the plan, and you've got the fellow up a mile of white raving, help, help. Well, all of a sudden, 17 houses have no water? Guys, these are things that are real, and if we don't address a methodology, top-down strategy, so how are we going to take care of all the people that are already here as we take the opportunity to bring the new people in? There's no better way. But you can build a budget with none of the consultants. Don't keep hanging your town plan on this consultant and this study and everything else. You can tell how much a septic system costs. You know how many houses you want to build. You know where they are. Sarah pointed out fairly loudly and clearly with respect to an area that she knows about that these systems have already been this fixed type of thing already. And if you don't identify that area as a red big need to be able to be addressed with this infrastructure, but it's just as easy when I dig for me to take septic out and to put water back in at the same time for fire protection, put the conduits in for fiber optics, and then finish it all off with a nice path for the kids to be able to walk to the school bus so the school bus is not traipsing through all these different things. And that's what a top-down simplistic strategy looks like, is you come down from the top 30,000 feet. But coming back to, to the septic thing, if you establish the enabling math, but this stuff can be done tomorrow. The bottom line is we already know where the resources are. But if you don't create the methodology to use eminent domain in the event that you cannot get collaboration, but it would be really nice since I hear constantly, I'm willing to donate this. I'm willing to give that. There's no methodology here in Jericho or in its town plan or in any of its documents to receive a gift. As a developer, I would much rather give you something outside of the development that facilitates the implementation of the town plan that enhances the function of the regulations and builds infrastructure because I get a tax deduction for it. The last time I checked, getting 40% off on something that you're going to try to take away from me, which I'm going to fight like hell to prevent. So which is better? It's worth $150,000. I get to be a hero with the donation. And the federal government and the state government gives me a nice bonus and I get a big pat on the back. Now that's something that I can approach people about, but because of the failure we've had here, for example, I was one of the biggest purveyors of let's get uh, rights of way for trails and, and all of those things. And then all of a sudden, someone thinks that the user of a trail is an interested party with a particularized interest, and they have the right to interfere with the landowner who gave the trail right away, right to develop his property. Okay, you need to protect gonna... property rights. There's nothing here that says that the property rights of the individuals, and here's the final note, give up on the state's flawed policy that you're going to develop the town centers. It will not work. The people don't want it that live there. The last thing in the world they want is more noise, greater density, and more busyness. And it's the hardest place to do it. But you can develop a town center and you can cause it to be a designated growth center and get a ton of stuff done. It's got Route 15 on it. It's got water close to it. <laughs> it's got the potential to do septic, et cetera, et cetera. And an email was generated out of the leadership of this community that essentially said, we're not interested in that donation. Mm -hmm. So guys, it's not working. Mm -hmm. And I think there's three to five pages that could be written 
that create the opportunity. But if you don't put them in a domain and the public good associated with all the things that you're proposing, it's going to go absolutely nowhere. Okay. One person who tries to stop a trail will be successful. If you don't believe me, go study the former jet pilot in Burlington that wanted to stop the rail trail from being used to go past his house, and you'll see how long something can be litigated. Okay, thank you. I want to give the SJ time. SJ, did you still want to offer some comments to the Planning Commission? Um, it was just a very specific comment to the conversation you were having about the government structure audit. Um, I just wanted to clarify my understanding um, is that that audit uh, is specifically about staffing, and that is a separate issue from going to a three-member to five-member board. I think that both topics are important and are part of the government capacity conversation, um, but I just wanted to uh, maybe ask if that is true. And if it is, make sure that you all aware, are aware of that specific definition and that um, the goal or strategy that you wrote in the in that first section may only apply to staffing and not the three to five member select board. Okay, thank you. you that's your understanding, David, too, right? The, the municipal audit, that Linda and John were talking about is really is only about staff. Staffing, yes. Right. yes. And SJ wanted to make sure that we all got yes. that. And in the in the action chart, they are separate actions. Yes. Staff is separate from select board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you left. I think you left. Um, all right. So for our next meeting for October 3rd. Is everybody, Eric is away. Is everyone else able to be here for October 3rd? So, David. Well, we see a copy of the plan before October 3rd. 3rd. Yes, that's oh. what I was just going to ask David and Linda about. So, um, normally we send out the packet to the planning commission on Friday before the meeting, which is this coming Friday. And Liz already has volume one, but you're gonna provide this chart. So do you think, and Eric is traveling, so you, especially since it's now the whole thing, the whole enchilada, volume one and volume two, do you think we'll have it back from Liz and able to distribute on Friday? Yes, but. <laughs> um, it's unlikely that we will get volume one to you before Monday. Volume two, I expect to have completed by the end of this week and can get that to you. <clears throat> okay. But volume yes, one won't, but won't be. Volume done. one, theoretically, everybody just saw. Yes. In word, not pretty. Correct. Right. It has a lot of blank pages. It has the yep. formatting is kind of crazy. But that's but it. the content is there. So you so you what have what time on Monday? Uh Liz is gonna try to get it to me by noon. But you have volume one already. Yeah. Yeah. Now doesn't look great, but yeah, yeah. yeah. You mm -hmm. have all the words. All the words. All the and words. are they the best words? Except for you have all the words in the pictures, they may not necessarily be where they all want to be and such, yeah. but right. it's all there. And planning right. commission members were given homework yeah. to look at volume two and to provide feedback to Linda on volume two. And so it's really, we're pretty much at like the, not even the 11th hour, the 12th Last hour. Call. Mm -hmm. Last call, really looking for accuracy, consistency. Yeah. Big oversights. Not, I wish it were, and I'm the worst offender. I mean, I'm looking at verb tenses. I'm terrible, <laughs> but literally. So There's I've something had to, about a well crafted sentence. I, I, yeah. Yes. I feel much better. It's not yeah. easier to know what you're supposed to do. Right. I, mean, I know you wanted feedback. You wanted feedback by noon today, but I, I didn't get it till like Monday. I know. Yeah. I had problems with email. Yeah. I'm just kidding. It was. Weird. It was 
annoying and weird, so, so I'm I, sorry. Can I give it to you tomorrow? You can, yes. I'm going to be at the town fair all day tomorrow, so okay. I won't do anything with anything that anyone has sent me until okay. Thursday. Well then. So, but it needs to be like, it needs to be like in my inbox Thursday morning so I can just cool. go through it efficiently. Cool. I don't, I, I won't be able to chase you. So if you don't have it in my inbox on Thursday. At 7 a.m. At 7 a.m. Are you having problems receiving the email from me or is it just sending? It was just sending, which I've never had a problem with before. Yeah. I have sometimes gotten, had problems receiving email. Like David one time couldn't send stuff in to me, but this is the first time that I haven't been able to send it stuff out. It was not just you, it was me, Sabine. It was, it was Sarah. Yeah. yeah, so I thought we had it fixed, but I guess it wasn't fixed. Okay, um, so, and then, and then David reminded us also yes. that literally um, up until the draft is published for the first select board meeting, we can still submit, like we find something, like I said, you know, it says red, it should say blue, like mm -hmm. big deal stuff. We can still have the draft corrected up until their first meeting, which we think is going to be like mid-November-ish, right? Yeah, I, I would mm -hmm. recommend that whatever beyond next week, whatever changes the Planning Commission wants uh, to see in the document, get kind of gathered together and provided to the select board in anticipation of their first public hearing so that they can be incorporated um, as part Into of the their, the, their final draft that will go to a final public hearing in December. <clears throat> that will be the, yeah. you know, 15 days before that, right. that they have to learn. So. so not to cry wolf, like this is our last opportunity because we really want the document to be great but also you know really cracking the whip on ourselves like we really want to be we have a big list of stuff to do we can't work on this plan for four more months we got to get going so now's the time mm -hmm. and and ccrpc basically said it's pretty great the way it is so we we right we know that it would pass muster and the mm -hmm. requirements that we all wanted it to be shorter and the requirements document would be longer than the town plan that we wanted to write yeah, I think I submitted 33 pages of documentation to the Regional Planning Commission speaking to all these elements that were required to be in the plan. So just know that that document alone, documenting our... Documenting the document? Document. Yeah. Documenting the documents in right. compliance with... Was 32 pages. Which is why he generated the document that he generated for us. And so. we've since incorporated all of the comments from the Regional Planning Commission so right yeah and they should be happy. are you are you able to join us do you think on the third you're you're kind of you're not sure you are not to put you on the spot never mind i'll be there okay <laughs> so that's i think that's our only item on the agenda that we have so far on the third if anybody has any other items if you let linda know i'll bring snacks Ooh, yeah. and you may greet me with happy birthday yeah you only look 29. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I will we'll make you a cake that says happy 29th birthday, Sarah. I yes. like cake. <laughs> oh, right. If okay. everyone else likes cake, right. they're welcome. I will make you a cake. Hi. Just, uh, just a high quality <laughs> greeting. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Any other items? Do you have them? I was just going to, just as an interesting aside, the initial town plan done in 1973 is a whopping 27 pages. <laughs> 1973, you said? Yep. Mm -hmm. Statutes changed quite a bit since then. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. Okay. And you won't be with us on the third? I am planning to be here. For you will be here on the yes. third. Okay. Yeah. And then will you and or Linda then be bringing this to the select board on the fifth? Yes uh bringing it i think they're just going to receive it i would think we would present it maybe later from that yeah, I we should talk friends. about that what is it required to be physically handed in paper form from planning commission to select board i, I think you want to get it into their into their hands as soon as mm -hmm. 
as soon as you can. That's your first opportunity. And how you choose to do that okay. is up to you. I did go to their meeting like two weeks ago and I presented highlights of the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were there. I was there. Oh, you left. I was on I was there remotely. You're right, because we were on vacation. So I presented highlights of the plan and um, all right, so so I don't think we need to do that again. No, well, it's just more a matter of, you know, on you're, the agenda, you're, here's you're the providing plan. them with here's the planning commission's recommendation for you know uh, the new town plan. And I did know. have Paula put a placeholder on the agenda on October 5th so that mm -hmm. we can have it on the record that the plan was recommended to the select board and they have to acknowledge receipt, right. is what it says in the statute. Yeah. Which is that a motion or is that? Uh, just thank you. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, I, I, does that I think that's be? probably fine. But okay. I was like, okay. Or you, you know, you can email it to John and have him acknowledge receipt of, of it, you know, on their behalf and, you know, provide it to them and you, they'll, okay. someone will say thank you and you'll say, yep, yeah, here you go. Okay. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Sarah, thank you. Second. Second. Chris, thank you. All those in favor of adjourn. Uh, is that everybody? Yep. Thank you very much.